Hi, this is Nick and I'm with Atlantic Laser Scanning. Today we're going to continue our series on collecting data with a drone LiDAR system. In this case, it's the Hasai XT32 recipient unit from Inertial Labs. In this video, Seth Berry from Global Hawk Maps is going to show us how to properly mount that system to an M300 drone. You can do this. Antenna. Pretty much a GoPro clip mount that has a double sided sticker, 3M sticker. I kind of pre set one up. But for the most part, it's just one of these little double sided units. Here. Just take one side off and you'll stick it to this little clip. And you're going to go ahead and stick it right to the top of the center of the drone in front of the light. At your best place. It's out of the way of any of the 360 side mounts, the 360 uh, visual mounts to make sure you're not going to run into anything. And you just clip that on. So I found the best way to actually clip it on and have a little sturdiness to it is clip it in there first, gives you something to hold on to, unpeel that part of the sticker. I personally like facing it forward myself this way. So Stick that to your drone, gives you some surface area to press onto. Now we have your mount and attached, and you can disconnect it whenever you want. If you'd like to keep that on your drone for when you rent the next time, it's there. And clip that back on. And what I do myself. As I take this antenna, you have to make sure it's clear of these propellers. I'll take it and I'll wrap it directly under the leg. And then go right up in here and I'll go right to maybe the single gimbal mount or something to that effect. And we'll just let it dangle there until we're ready. You're going to remove the leather cover. Protects it from scratches. And right here is where you're going to screw on your antenna. They'll screw right together, and you can do it after you connect it. So, to connect it, we're going to line up the white dot and Personally, I find it easiest to remove the lens cap first because I've forgotten a few times and I'm really good at forgetting to take it off if I start setting it up without. So anyway, back to lining it up. We'll put the white dot on the red dot. Hold right here and push it together. Then you're going to kind of twist it around counterclockwise until you hear a click or feel a click and you align the two red dots. Now we know it's locked. And then we just screw the antenna right into the attached port here. There we go. And that gives us our GNSS signal for the IMU to line up and everything else. Your Wi-Fi antenna should already be attached. If it's not, and it's not screwed in, it's going to be this antenna here. Kind of has a 90 degree foldable to it. It says Wi Fi. You screw it on there under the Wi Fi attachment and then fold it down. I usually aim it towards the ground. Unless you're flying really far away from yourself and need to attach, it really doesn't matter which direction it's folded as long as you have it attached. So, before we do anything else and we move forward at all, we're going to make sure and we insert the USB drive. And that goes in right over here. Just below the antenna, you'll see a thing that says USB for an insert slot. You're just going to slide it in right there. Push just softly enough till it stops. Now that we have the drone turned on, we have not turned on the XT32 LiDAR unit yet. That is a separate, separate task. Okay, so 
We've got everything here ready to go, and the lighter here is about ready to be turned on. But we want to make sure that we've started the recording on our base station. We know our base is recording. Our drone's ready to go. We've uploaded our mission, and we have our two figure eights, which are the two hourglass flight missions we set up. When we turn this on, it only takes one, one and a half to one second push. You'll see the three lights come on. That's how you know you're going to start. I'll show you what that looks like when we turn it on. Quick push. We're not holding it down. We're just waiting just long enough for all three lights to be on. We're going to open up our Wi-Fi settings. So we're going to go into our Wi-Fi settings. I've already connected to it here, but it's going to show up as a Resevi 6C6-3DB. As long as it says Resevi, you're within the range of it. Click on that. Your password will be LIDAR and INS as follows. Take a look at the image with the capital L, capital A, and the capital I. Yes. All right, go back out of that, and then when we go into our browser, we're going to notice that, that there's nothing, no Wi-Fi, there's no way to connect, so we're just going to type in 192.168.12.1. And after you're connected, to the Wi-Fi, to Recipe, you can go into the browser, type 192.168.12.1, and it'll bring up this menu. So, now that we have this menu brought up, what we'll see is how many antenna or uh, satellites are attached, which we're up to 30, like I said I, I would prefer. And everything looks good. So we're going to go to menu, go to storage. Here is our uh, USB drive. There's no saved previous projects, so you have no need to format. But just in case, if you'd like to, you can hit format. If you have any projects you've done previously, make sure they are backed up on another drive or your PC before you do. While formatting this USB stick, make sure you realize you cannot format it on any PC or desktop in a quick format setting. It has to be formatted on the LiDAR unit, on the XT32 unit itself. It uses a special XFAT32 format. If you do make a mistake and format it, call Atlantic Laser. All right, we've got that done. So, we like to status. We can name our project for our project folder and we're going to call it demo XT32 We'll save that. It's in green. It says custom file name has been saved. All right. Now, you no know, settings and geometry. We're going to settings and geometry, and where it says camera trigger right here, we're going to change that since we're going pretty slow, we'll say every three seconds. It's important not to take too many photos. Everybody thinks that they should set it down to maybe like one second, so it takes as many photos as possible. The issue with that is you're going to get too much overlap blurs the mapping and blurs the images and then your colorized point cloud will not turn out as accurate. The points will always be the same but your colorized will not be as good and your 2D ortho map won't turn out as good if you use the imaging. So we'll go back into status and once we're ready to go we're going to go ahead and hit start. So once we start recording we're going to hear the camera start taking pictures every three seconds. And as you can see, we are recording data into our file name. And we're good to go. Now that we've got it recording, we can hear the camera taking pictures. 
got it every three seconds like we wanted. We're gonna go ahead and start our mission. So, we're gonna hit start mission. Start. Start. And we Moving to start point. Go. After we see it fly its two figure eights, which is a separate mission, we're just going to go ahead and start up our second mission while the drone's still in the air. We don't let it fully return to home, there's no need for that. It's still recording data. So the minute that you see it finished and it starts beeping to return to home, stop the return to home, start your next mission.